Let's expand the view this morning and take a look at the overall sea surface temperature anomalies. As you can definitely see, we're starting to see a little bit of a trend of some cooler waters out there into the equatorial region. That is the trend that I do feel that we're likely coming out of the Enzo neutral and heading into that La Nina by the time we head into late fall going into the winter ahead. But it's also been prevalent of this warm blob. Your blue is your cooler waters, your red is your warmer waters. And that is a very significant warm blob out there into the NPO, your North Pacific Oscillation region. That's what's made the uh, overall active jet stream and the high tornado count that we've seen so far this year. And that warm blob doesn't look to go anywhere anytime soon. So I do feel the tornado season is gonna keep active all the way through the fall months for the rest of the year. So if we take a look at at least the short term, give you an update on this cool front, cold, you know, cold front that we've been kind of talking about for the last week on this channel. It's definitely alive and well as we start the month of August, at least for the first couple of days, it's definitely really not gonna feel like August. It's gonna be feeling fairly pleasant with a good part of the country experiencing those below average temperature anomalies, at least for the first couple of days through the month of August, but we know it's August and it's the hottest time of the year. So it's likely not going to, you know, hang around for any, any length of time. And yes, the ridge does in fact come back in a big way and start building across the South. Once it kind of loses its luster, this high pressure will be starting to take over yet again in the desert Southwest, much of the South Southern and central plains will be feeling the heat. By the time we head into the middle of next week and especially by next weekend but it's also going to ramp up back up severe weather so as the ridge starts to build across the south again those storms tracks have to go somewhere so it's likely going to go up and over the ridge yet again so the storm track is going to be waking up big time across the central and northern plains that's for that second week of august and i do feel that would likely continue into that third week of august and the latest update at least on the temperature map going forward like i mentioned we've been in this Enzo neutral type setup in the last 60 days, at least for the middle part of the country, it's been overall average temperatures. It hasn't really been above average, below average, it's been more of a, a normal normal summer so far where it really hasn't been normal it's just really along the coastal regions of california but once you go inland it definitely has been slightly above normal up there across the pacific northwest but there's also been an, another uh, standout across the ohio valley into the mid-atlantic and the northeast they've experienced a little bit more warmer conditions up there but I do feel with even with the latest update, since I feel like that end zone neutral is going to continue through the month of August, at least for the middle part of the country, you're still going to be on that average to possibly slightly above average side where it's going to be noticeable again, where it's been dry and you can't really get a break is in the desert southwest. Feel those temperatures are likely going to soar to a lot of records unfolding in the month of August and of course the Pacific Northwest where again the drier areas tend to heat up quicker and that's exactly what's likely going to unfold and the continued warmer anomalies for the Ohio Valley the Mid-Atlantic as well as into the Northeast would likely uh, take take shape as well so if we break it down on the precipitation map the only thing I think it really stands out is the monsoonal flow that really has been alive and prevalent for July, at least in New Mexico, it really hasn't been terribly too much in Arizona. I do feel we'll start to see more of a drying period as that monsoonal flow will start to kind of dry up in those areas and where I do feel it's going to start, you know, heating up and again, continue to be on that rainier side with these pesky fronts and tropical lows just kind of hanging out by the coast, those heavier rains will likely continue for the southeast across the eastern seaboard, especially those at far, far southeastern regions and back into Florida for the rest of the month of August. So if we break this thing down for you, um, we've been in this uh, like 
Enzo neutral weak La Nina criteria really over for the last year. So if we take it back just to last year, if you recall, we trended back into that Enzo neutral. Whenever you see temperatures uh, below negative 0.5, or positive 0.5 or negative 0.5, you're in that Enzo neutral, which we were prominently in last spring. We had a very active spring and that continued through uh, at least the first half of summer. But as we got into that fall and especially November, we trended back into that weak, weak La Nina criteria. We didn't stay there long. We were only there three to six months. And then of course, what happened this time over the spring we trended back into that Enzo neutral, which we where we are currently right now. So the trend's been favoring exactly the same setup as last year. And now the trend's starting to uptick again, back into that weak La Nina, and that looks to start to take shape and likely hit the criteria by the time we head into the month of October and the winter ahead yet again. So if we take a look at the overall, uh, you know, Atlantic hurricane season, a lot of people out there throwing in the towel, the season's over, everything like that. But overall, if you look at the data, we basically were exactly where we need to be this time of year. It's just been, again, an average year. Typical, we have three name storms already. You're typically on August 3rd, we have our third name storm. So we're following more or less an average season, just kind of like last year. Really didn't start off gangbusters. But still, it only takes one storm. And I, obviously, we had several storms last year, and we still ended up being average to a little bit slightly above average with that uptick in La Nina again. And I do feel that's going to be following kind of the same trend. And as some of the tr same trends as last year, I do feel it continues to remain overall on the, on the quieter side. So you got normal conditions right now, and it's trending a little bit uh, again, there's still a lot of sinking air in the Atlantic Basin. We still have a lot of Saharan dust coming off the main development region. There's a lot of dry air across the, the Atlantic Basin. So it's going to be very difficult for storms to come together and, and gain a low-level center. But I do feel, again, the low the uptrend of after Labor Day, we're definitely starting to see a noticeable trend. This is typically when you start to see it get a little bit more active. That's why you have 62% of the season happens after Labor Day. Because again, you know, hurricane season goes all the way through the end of November. So yes, I do feel it's going to be slower, but it's going to ramp up big time as we head into after Labor Day and especially going into into September into October. But what continues to remain active is on the tornado front. If you recall last year, we had 1,910 tornadoes. We're already up to 1,400. It's been a very active year. It continues to be a very active year. And with especially with that warm blob out there into the NPO region, I don't see anything to stop this anytime soon. So we're well on our way to meet or even exceed the tornado count uh, as last year. So I wouldn't be surprised we end somewhere in the vicinity of 2000 tornadoes by the time we get all the way through uh, December. But what also the trend is, is looking at the latest drought update that came out just yesterday. I feel like, again, the drought continues for much of the desert southwest, much of the Pacific Northwest. You will continue to remain dry. The noticeable trend will be Oh, an overall drier period across the middle part of the country that is going to get a little bit pronounced, especially as we go out of August and going into September and October, as we start to feel a little bit more of the effects of the weak La Nina starting to come back on board. But overall, I do feel just like last year, we're going to be seeing an uptick in you know, slightly below, slightly above average temperatures for overall August, September, and October, I do feel you're going to be on the, the overall warmer side, really across the lower 48. I don't really see any data that tells me any different. And also what's going to be noticeable is that overall drying period, it starts start to kind of take shape as we get deeper in towards the end of, sept end of uh, September. And of course, we go into October. 
and then where it's, where it's going to be a little bit more active, start feeling those effects of those tropical life systems down there into uh, uh, the upper Gulf, Gulf, upper Gulf Coast, back into Florida and across the eastern seaboard, but especially there into the Carolinas will be very active this year. So your typical La Nina kind of looks like this as we go into that end of fall, heading into that winter months. We're going to be definitely seeing a, a, a trending into that less active subtropical jet. I, again, the, most of the most of Southern California, most of the desert southwest, those areas in Oklahoma and Texas and much of the southeast and Florida will definitely see a, a drying, a drier overall, drier picture starting to take shape as the polar jet will get a little bit more active. We'll start to see the rains likely coming back towards that end of october especially november going in december time frame for the pacific northwest and then we'll start to see those cool shots come in from the northwest and dive down into the southeast while much of the southern regions will be on the above normal side so and that that trend continues going into that fall and the beginning stages of winter for the rest of the year once we meet that weak la nina criteria we're going to be starting to warm up we're going to start to feel that that uh, subtropical jet stream becoming a lot less active across the middle part of the country and that's likely as the drought likely starts to come back in the middle part of the country we're going to start to see those temperatures overall on the uptick as we head towards the fall months going into winter. And also what we're also going to see is the overall dryer. So the latest data is starting to indicate what the newest, newest guidance, newest uh, guidance looks like as the trend comes out of that week, you know, Enzo neutral again, going into that week La Nina, it's definitely favoring that less active subtropical jet stream across the South that will continue on the overall drier period as we get deeper into fall heading into December. And then what's going to be a much more alive and prevalent as the rains likely will come back for those areas into the Pacific Northwest, heading into that November and December timeframe across the Northern interior, where you're gonna have a, a, a more active polar jet by then. So guys, I appreciate you watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update. Why I protect you before and after storm.